Good evening, everybody. Uh, at the outset, I thank uh, Dr. Mayur Agarwal for organizing this wonderfully organized conference, uh, Armo in India. So, with a lot of uh, good faculties, he has taken personally and invited uh, many faculties, and with good uh, topics. That should uh, I should say because this is I should say it's a scientific uh, scientific extravaganza. So, congratulations, Dr. Mayur. Thank you. So, yeah, my topic is on an interesting topic. I know the time is running short. I'll be quick because it's a new thing. So, twin creatine, the next leg in uh, diabetes uh, management. First of all, greetings to all of you from Bangalore. So, if you take the overview of incretin hormones, GIP and GLP-1, so GIP and GLP-1 are responsible for the incretin effect. Uh, a phenomena in which a orally administered glucose leads to a greater release of insulin than does the IV glucose administration. You can see on the left hand side, the GIP discovered in 1970, it is secreted by the duodenal K cells, uh, it is stimulated by lipids and glucose. On the right hand side, GLP-1 is discovered in early 1980s, secreted by distal ileal L cell and it is stimulated by glucose. So this is how the incretin effect acts, uh, uh, looks like because of the oral and the IV glucose. So you can see the glucose dependent effect of GIP on insulin and glucagon secretion, the, how the combination and hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia will be well balanced. This is an interesting slide which gives the overall picture of GLP-1 and GIP where the complementary effects and how they improve glucose and lipid metabolism. On the left hand side, the GLP-1 receptor agonism, you can see uh, it acts on the central nervous system where it increases the satiety, uh, causes nausea, decreases food intake and decreases body weight. In pancreas, it does it in increases the insulin, decreases the glucagon. In stomach, it decreases the gastric emptying time. Indirect action in liver increases insulin sensitivity, decreases the hepatic glucose production, decreases ectopic lipid accumulation, and systemic, it decreases the hyperglycemia. On the right hand side, you can see the GIP receptor agonism. This is one new concept for all of us, where it decreases nausea, decreases foot intake, and decreases body weight. You can see here, uh, GLP-1 causes nausea and uh, GIP causes uh, uh, decreased food intake and decreased nausea. In pancreas, it increases insulin and increases glucagon here. Adipose tissue, it increases insulin sensitivity, uh, increased lipid buffering capacity, increases blood flow, increases storage capacity, decreases pro-inflammatory immune cell infiltration, increases insulin sensitivity, metabolic flexibility and decreases ectopic lipid accumulation, ultimately decreases hyperglycemia and triglycerides. This is how the mechanism of action of GIP and GLP-1 in pictorial uh, demonstration. So it, this article was, uh, you can see, it tells about the uh, twin creatine in, published in way back in uh, 2016. Twin creatine as a potential therapeutic for the management of type 2 diabetes with obesity. You can see here how the uh, twin creatine acts on the pancreatic islets, that is GLP-1 and GIP, uh, GIP, and how it leads to decreased glucose level, increased insulin sensitivity, ultimately leading on to weight loss and improved diabetes control. So, Lily's diabetes treatment. Tirzapatide gets the FDA nod, that is, the FDA has granted approval to its dual GIP and GLP-1 RA, uh, that is the Tirzapatide injection. So, it comes in the name of Monjaro. It is approved in uh, recently, three months back, that is May 2022. It's available in US pharmacy. It's a GIP and GLP-1 receptor agonist. So the FDA stated that tirzapatide represents an important advance in the treatment of type 2 diabetes, lipid disorders and obesity. It is an experimental drug that works by stimulating two different receptors, GLP-1 and GIP. 
This is known as dual GLP-1 and GIP agonist. The action, in brief, you can see it causes decreased appetite, decreased food intake, and increased weight loss. In pancreas, it increases the insulin secretion and synthesis. It increases the beta cell survival. In white adipose tissue, it increases lipolysis and increases lipogenesis. So combining incretin hormones, you can see the phase two trial on the efficacy and safety of tirzapatide the body weight outcomes of treatment of tirzapatide compared to dualaglutide. You can see this particular molecule showed significantly better efficacy regarding weight loss compared to dualaglutide and placebo with an acceptable safety and tolerability profile. Now coming to few of the clinical trials with this molecule, surpass clinical trial, it began in 2018. The dosage used was 5, 10, and 15 milligram. You can see in this slide, there was various trial on the left-hand side. You can see the surpass 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The surpass 1 was the comparator was with placebo, surpass 2 with the semaglutide, surpass 3 with insulin and de insulin degludag, surpass 4 with insulin glargine, and 5 with uh, placebo also. So you kindly note there were the patients were on concomitant therapy as well. The primary outcome was A1C. If you see the overall outcome of this particular trial, tirzapatide was found to be superior to each comparator group in lowering both A1C and weight. Now coming to the another interesting trial that is done with tirzapatide is the Sermont 1 trial. It is an international phase 3 double wine randomized trial involving 2,500 patients who are obese, overweight plus weight related compli complication or some without diabetes. So the dosage, uh, this is a weekly subcutaneous injections of tirzapatide for 72 weeks. You can see the 5 milligram, 10 milligram, 15 milligrams and the placebo was compared. The mean weight change at 72 weeks, you can see in percentage with regards to 5, 10 and 15 milligram, when compared to placebo, you can see the 20% reduction in weight, again, 20% uh, reduction in weight when it comes to tirzapatide. More than 5% weight reduction at 72 weeks, 72 weeks, you can see here, 90% of the patient on tirzapatide uh, had more than 5% weight reduction at 72 weeks when compared to placebo of 34%. Uh, when it comes to adverse effect, yes, there are certain adverse effects like, like GLP-1-RA, that is nausea, diarrhea, and constipation. When you compare tirzapatide versus GLP-1, you can see on the left-hand side, of this slide, there is a decrease in HbA1c, where you can see on the tirzapatide column, you can expect the reduction of HbA1c of up to 2.3 when it comes to semaglutide of 1.86. On the right hand side, you can see when it comes to weight loss, you can expect up to 11 kg weight loss in tirzapatide when, when you are seeing 5.7 kg weight loss in semaglutide. Now, com comparing tirzapatide with semaglutide, you can see here uh, the maximum dose was used was tirzapatide was 15 milligram and Vigovi, that is semaglutide, that is 2.4 milligram. The average weight loss was 20.9% and 14.9% with sima. Actual weight loss with uh, tirzapatide was 17.8%, with sima it was 12.5%. Coming to the side effects profile, you can see uh, the nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea both is seen in both, but comparatively less with the ratizapatide. So, uh, surpass clinical program, if you take in type 2 diabetes, it has been uh, surpass 1 with monotherapy, then compared with semaglutide, then with the uh, insulin deglutide, surpass 4 with uh, glargine, and surpass 5 with uh, placebo. In all this study, you can see when it is used as a monotherapy, you know, the reduction in HbA1c was 2, 2%, 2 up to 2%. In when it's add on to metformin, when it is uh, it is superior to semaglutide, superior to insulin deglutag in surplus 3, and superior to placebo in surplus 5. In all this surplus study, its tirzapatide showed the superiority 
with regard to hba1c when it comes to body weight as well when it come in all these five studies surpass 1 2 3 4 5 you can see the reduction of uh, body weight up to 10 to 12 kg is uh weight reduction when it compared to the competent uh, competitors so the key efficacy of more uh, efficacy finding that is more than 5% weight loss maintenance that is very important you can see it is up to 77% to 88% when it compared to the competitors in all the surpass 1 to 5 study more than 10% weight loss yes still it is better with surpass when compared to the competitors so the uh, key 15% weight loss once again you can see 15% weight loss is a quite a uh, significant one when it compared to the comparators 15% weight loss was also seen with tirzabatide gastrointestinal side effect once again the vomiting diarrhea and nausea was seen with the uh, uh, sinsarpra study program the safety and tolerability the overall safety profile is consistent with the glp1 ra the most frequent adverse effect were gi generally mild to moderate and transient discontinuation of the study drug due to ai adverse event range from 3% to 11% hypoglycemia was low in the surpass program when tirzapatide was not combined with an sulfonylurea or insulin that means you should be careful uh, uh, when you are using the uh, this particular uh, tirzapatide with insulin or sulfonylurea the dosage has to be reduced of that particular molecule so coming to the other side effect pancreatitis though they saw the a few incidences of pancreatitis but none of the events were serious anti drug antibodies there was no evidence medically thyroid carcinoma carcinoma no clinical relevant changes diabetic retinopathy the cases of treatment emergent diabetic retinopathy or reported in surpass to prior you can you नहीं नहीं लोग बोलते हैं कि नहीं दवाई ऐसे नहीं वो प्रिवेंशन के रूप में जैसे जिन डॉक्टर के साथ ये कर रहे हैं ना हेलो पचास मरीजों की दवाई फरमाई प्लीज म्यूट आपको बता दें सो द गुड कैंडिडेट इज बी एम आई ग्रेटर देन थर्टी बी एम आई ग्रेटर देन ट्वेंटी सेवन विथ ओबेसिटी रिलेटेड मेडिकल कंडीशन weight loss average that is if you see compare with bariatric surgery you are seeing 25 to 30% percent body weight reduction tirzapatide is 15 to 20.9% body weight reduction the only limiting factor will be cost highlighting the major stumbling block that could limit tirzapatide's uptake so contraindication also we should know they should the contraindications are family history of medullary thyroid carcinoma patients with multiple endocrineoplasia syndrome type 2 then hypersensitivity the no major drug interaction delayed gastric emptying can impact absorption of any oral medication administered concomitantly like hormone contraceptive sulfonylurea insulin insulin and sincalide so that administration the dosage is 2.5 mg 5 mg 7.5 10 mg 12.5 and 15 mg so increase the dosage like starting from 2.5 mg and uh, then increase by 2.5 mg at four week increments as needed no renal or hepatic dose adjustment it's a once weekly subcutaneous injection it can be ad- administered into abdomen thigh or upper arm so ongoing research still many are uh, many are to come that is surpass uh, 6 comparing with insulin lispro summit study that is its effects on heart failure and obesity which will come next year and sarmont one its effect on weight loss and obesity it will come in 2024 and uh, surpass cvot that is uh, surpass uh, versus dilaglutide uh, time to first cardiac event that will come in 2024 to so, ladies and gentlemen to summarize my talk uni monocular peptide based dual agonist that is spin cretin stirzapatide have been gaining much attention recently as a novel anti diabetic agents that can potentially control glycemia and body weight twin cretins can add additional therapeutic efficacy to di- tailor diabetes care especially among obese individuals with type 2 diabetes however caution should be exercised 
as to whether or not these drugs are appropriate for the management of Asian type 2 diabetic patients, which are primarily characterized by non-obesity and impaired beta cell function, as well as in that of an elderly adults with type 2 diabetes who tend to develop sarcopenia and frailty as a result of poor energy intake. It is still not available in India. Once it is available, we can use it uh, first uh, in our patient, see the efficacy to know the practicality of this particular molecule. Thank you for your patience hearing. Thanks, Dr. Mayer, for the opportunity. Over to question and answer. If there is any question, we can discuss.